And I was so afraid to like, just stand up for myself. I had no self-esteem and no skills. So a lot of times addiction is a replacement for what we lack the courage to do. friends, and welcome to Genuine Life Recovery with me, Jody Stevens. Today's show is about why relapse is a normal part of the recovery process. Now, that doesn't mean it's encouraged or anything like that. There are some people that get into recovery for addictions, and they get a sponsor, they do the program, and they don't relapse. But more often than not, relapse happens on the road to sobriety and ultimately uh, abstinence, abstinence from the addictive substance. By the way, please share this channel on social media or with anyone you know in your family or maybe you have some friends or a friend, loved one that struggles with addiction. Please share that. I would appreciate it so much. Thank you so much. And uh, please hit the subscribe button too and the little bell. That way, every time I post a new video, you will be notified and we can hang out. So why relapse is a normal part of recovery. So what is relapse? Well, there's relapse and then there's lapse. Lapse is kind of like a, a, a smaller relapse where, you know, maybe we mess up one night, have a glass of wine or take a pill or something like that. We catch ourselves we get back on track. So it's a little bit shorter. A relapse is like the full blown kind of a relapse where we really mess up. Maybe we go on a bender, that kind of a thing. Um, but ultimately a relapse, of course, is falling back into the pattern of habitual behavior. So whatever it is that we're trying to quit, whether it's drinking, whether it's drugs, whether it's gambling, whether it's, uh, you know, food, those are, there's uh, substance addictions, which is drugs and alcohol. And then there's process or behavioral addictions like food and like gambling and sex and things like that. But these are all addictions, right? Um, different types of addictions. But they're still things that we often, as we're trying to overcome, we're going to relapse. That's just part of life, right? It's, it's normal. I mean, think about, you know, if, if you're struggling right now and you're trying to quit drinking or using, okay, uh, congratulations, because here's the thing you're, since you're thinking about it and since you're working towards sobriety, you're on that road. So don't give up. Don't let a relapse stop you. Think about the times maybe you've tried to lose weight. Okay. I mean, how many times do you stop and start and stop and start, right? I've been on like 15 diets in the last year. And, you know, as I'm getting older, it's taking a lot more time to figure out what works and what doesn't work, right? Or think about anger management, you know, if, if you're, I mean, I used to struggle with anger in the worst way. And um, a lot of the underlying issues that were causing my, my drinking and addictive behavior was uh, stuffing my emotions, was anger, was anxiety, didn't know how to deal with those emotions, didn't even really know why they were there but I was drinking and using to cover all that up. Once I took the substance away, I still struggled with anger. And I had these like emotional relapses because it, you know, it takes some time to recognize those triggers and things like that. So a lot of times with addiction, when we're triggered to drink or use, sometimes we're so out of touch emotionally. I know I was that we don't even know why. So that's why relapse can be so common because you're falling back into this addictive pattern, but you don't even really have the tools and the emotional sobriety to understand why and uh, what's going on. So one of the wonderful things about a relapse is it can be a really great time to start to recognize triggers. So we have this relapse, then one of the good things to do is to kind of take a step back, like work with your sponsor um, or therapist or counselor, but take a step back, right? And think about what 
triggered this? What was going on before this relapse happened? Was it something that happened at work? I used to struggle with my job. I was in radio and media for 30 years, and I had a difficult time standing up for myself and things like that. And a lot of times I felt so powerless over like my boss or what people thought of me and things like that. And I was so afraid to like just stand up for myself. I had no self-esteem and no skills. So a lot of times addiction is a replacement for what we lack the courage to do. I felt powerless to stand up for myself, but by drinking and using, A, I was soothing those emotions and B, I was kind of taking my power back. And so as I began to understand this, I began to learn the tools to get my needs met, to be more assertive. And then the triggers weren't as bad. And then slowly they just decreased over time to where I don't have those triggers anymore. But it was a work in process, right? It didn't just happen overnight. It takes a long time. Because remember, when you have a relapse, it's more an emotional lapse and then you're filling it with a substance, okay? So it's really about the a lot of the emotions and sometimes the environmental cues and things like that. But so you have a relapse. So looking back, like like I said, was it something at work? Was it something my mom said? <laughs> right? What was it? Um, you know, driving by the bar. Was it the smell? You know, there's a lot of different triggers or cues. So when we have a relapse, it's good to take some time and prepare for the next time so that the next time we will be successful, you see? So it's, it's okay, but you just got to learn from it, right? Learn from your mistakes, pick yourself up and try again. So are you with me so far? I'd love to hear from you. Um, how do you deal with relapses? If you've been sober for a long time, how did you overcome those lapses and things like that? So what's the biggest cause of relapse? One of the biggest causes of a relapse in anything, whether it's food or gambling or drugs or alcohol, is negative emotions, okay? So again, you relapse into the substance, okay? But a lot of the real relapse is an emotional process. So one of the things we want to do is begin to understand the emotional process or the turn of events that caused the, the the relapse, right? And the ultimate goal, really, of sobriety is learning to deal, as they say, right, with life on life's terms, right, without turning to a substance. So, so they call it like emotional sobriety or learning to deal with the things that come up, like, right, the Bible says, Jesus says, in this life. He says, you will have trouble. <laughs> you will. Tragedy will come, but take heart. I have overcome the world. And, and, and you can do this, right? But, you know, a lot of times we don't have the tools. We just don't have the tools. You know, I, I sit in meetings all the time, and that's the common theme is I didn't have the tools. I didn't have the life skills, uh, especially to deal with emotions, because so many people that come from addictive families um, or codependent families, they don't deal with emotion. And when they do, it's passive aggressive or it's stuffier emotions or it's don't feel that way. Stop feeling that way. You know, mom or dad doesn't like it when you feel that way. So you stop. <laughs> and so you, you, you get into this addictive pattern of, of escapism so early in life that you know, we get older and we're drinking and using to cover up all this stuff. And we don't oftentimes really know what's going on. Then we try to quit and we're just triggered all over the place. And we're having a real hard time dealing with our emotions because we haven't been taught how. So this is why it's a process and you need not beat yourself up, right? Um, it's it's about working through the the emotions without drinking or using. That's the ultimate goal. So, um, and the other thing is uh, self-efficacy, which is our belief in our ability to do it, to do anything. Do I believe in my ability to do it? So um, here's, here's the thing. Our, our belief in ourself, our self-esteem, our self-efficacy is at the lowest point when we are experiencing negative emotions, 
Does that make sense? So what that means is when you're experiencing sadness or grief or depression, the belief in your ability to stay sober is at the lowest point. So you need to know that. You need to connect with that and be aware of that. That way you can prepare for next time. Okay. And if you're a Christian like me, and if you're a believer, guess what's going to happen? The enemy is going to come in and he's going to, when he see, he's going to bring all those triggers to you, right? And see if he can get you to stumble, right? Because that's the ultimate goal of the enemy, because he wants you to fall down. He wants you to ruin your life. He wants you to relapse. He wants you to kill yourself, really. And he especially doesn't want you to help other people and share the good news of God and sobriety with anyone else. So understanding that you know, this stuff, you know, when you, when you get sober, these triggers are going to come against you and they're going to say, you can't do this. You can't do this. Well, yes, you can. But when hard stuff comes up, you just need to understand, okay, you know, the reason I feel like I can't do this is because of this situation or feeling depressed or feeling anxious or, you know, <laughs> nobody watched my podcast or like me, I'm, I'm trying to start, a, you know, I left my corporate uh, career and I'm trying to start this, this business and get my um, license degree or my uh, therapy counseling degree, um, licensed alcohol drug counselor. And it's really hard. You know, I left behind a huge career and a radio platform to, um, to work with, with addicts and stuff like that, because my brother died of addiction and I've been sober and I felt really called to do this, but it's hard. And some days I just want to give up. Like I want to totally give up because it feels like it's not working because it's a long road. <laughs> right. And one of the things that God showed me, not just with addiction, but with anything is to work like an ant, to understand that it's it's slow and steady and in an addiction we want it all we want it now right and if we can't get it now we're just done you know and it's it doesn't work that way um and and so it's just really hard but that's where we just we just pray to god and say god help me to work like an ant to take baby steps right one day at a time and eventually you're going to get to the other side. You're going to get to where you need to go, whether it's losing the 10 pounds, whether it's staying sober, whether it's quitting drugs or quitting gambling. I live in Nevada now, so it's just casinos everywhere. Um, so it's just about staying the course and understanding that anything worth having is hard and that it takes time and we're going to fall down and we're going to relapse, you know, um, just like everything else in life. Everything else in life is hard. Losing weight is hard. And so again, the goal is not to, to relapse, but if you do to pick yourself up and, um, to keep going because, a lot of times with um, addiction, it can be an unconscious escapism that we we learned early, early, early in life. Like I was talking about, if our feelings weren't validated or we were told we were wrong or to put those things away, we may have learned to escape a long time ago. For me, I went into like fantasy land and I dreamed of all the, you know, visions of grandeur, you know, like they talk about in, in recovery. So I, I was, um, a dreamer and doing this kind of escapism thing. And then I found the alcohol. And so I was continuing my way of escaping my emotions and the hard things a long, long, long time ago. Okay. So it can be super unconscious. So you can literally be going along, get triggered, fall back into your addiction, wake up the next day and not even know what happened. Now, people that don't struggle with emotions in the way addicts do would be like, well, what do you mean? How, do, uh, how does it just happen and you don't know it? Because you're not in touch. You've stuffed all your emotions. So you really don't know what's going on. So again, keeping one of the things that's helpful too 
is to write this stuff down or keep a journal of triggers that cause the lapse. So again, reflecting back what happened uh, and then keeping a journal of environmental triggers. Is it sights? Is it smells? Is it driving by the bar? Is it that person in my family that I really need to have better boundaries with? Is it when someone criticizes me and my self-esteem goes back in the toilet or I can't get that date or something my husband or wife says. Understanding these triggers and knowing, okay, this is a cue or a trigger. Then from there, we work on skills and strategies, right? So how to handle those triggers so that we can remain sober through that process. The other thing is if we look at addiction as a disease, if people are super far, far along in their alcoholism and their drugs, sometimes relapses are unavoidable because, um, for instance, we used to have to give my brother alcohol so he wouldn't have seizures and stuff because he was in the disease portion of his addiction before he died. His, what happens when you use for a long, long, long time is your brain and your body starts to adapt and it changes. It ab- actually changes. It's like a diabetic. You keep doing the same thing. Your, your body starts to change. So what oftentimes like with, that's why they, with heroin addicts, they'll often have them on methadone for quite some time because it helps with withdrawal and it also helps with relapse. So there's also that disease model where when we get so far into our addiction, sometimes we need, um, drugs, not, (laughs) not those kind of drugs, but drugs that actually help us. And there's some drugs that will block the, uh, neurotransmitters and inhibitors that cause the dopamine, uh, effect. I'm obviously, I'm not a neuroscientist, but they'll block that stuff. So if someone has a relapse, uh, it doesn't do anything. Or uh, my brother was on something called, I think it was an abuse that literally made him sick. If he drank, he would literally get physically sick. So there's things like that, that we may need so that we don't lapse because we've, we've got to stabilize our body. So that's another part of it too. Now, the other really important thing about having a relapse is to not beat yourself up and criticize yourself and um, fall into um, what happens to me with food. (laughs) Now that I'm not (laughs) drinking or drugging, this happens to me with food. And so I'm taking my own advice. Uh, it's, It's called abstinence violation effect which is a, a, a good name, right? It sounds so nice and clinical. Uh, I'm working towards my alcohol drug license, I think I told you. So the stuff I'm telling you is actually, you know, uh, these are actual relapse prevention tips and things that are, are great for people in recovery because they've been proven to, to work. I'm going to do a series on relapse prevention tips. But what what that basically is, abstinence violation effect, <laughs> is it's this all or nothing, right? It's it's where we say, well, you know what? I had that glass of wine, so screw it. You know, I'm just going to drink the whole bottle, like I'm done. You know, and then I'm then I'm going to go on this five day bender, and that happens all the time. And I used to do this as well. Uh, well, I had a beer, so I might as well have twenty. Um, Now, this also happens (laughs) to me like with food, right? It's like, well, I had the donuts, so I might as well have 50 more. And the the truth is that that's that's the lie. You you don't have to do that. Um, There are plenty of people who have had a glass of wine and then stopped and called their sponsor. Sometimes that's not possible, depending on our level of alcoholism. Sometimes, you know, I I struggled with where once I started, man, I just couldn't stop. But there was a there was a point when I first started drinking um, for the evening or whatever, where I knew I could quit. But a lot of times I, I just kept doing it because I wanted to. Whatever the case is for you, even the next day. You pick up the phone, you call your sponsor, you, you, you call your therapist or whoever, and you start again. You can do it. Um, I've, I've just been learning this with the food thing. I mean, I, I literally have said, okay, you know, like the other day, um, my husband orders a pizza and breadsticks. I'm like, really? <laughs> 
really? And I was so hungry. It was just supposed to be for him. It was like a small pizza, but I'm like, give me some of that, you know? And so I'm, I'm eating it and it doesn't even taste very good. And, and I'm, I'm getting into that. Well, if I'm going to eat this, I might as well just blow it for the whole day. And I thought about this and I thought, no, no, because that's called a lapse not a relapse. It's a lapse. All right. I had a piece of pizza, a couple of breadsticks. No big deal. That's a lapse. We're going to pick up. We're going to start again. Because remember, it's the negative emotions and the beating ourselves up and the low self-efficacy and low self-esteem that pushes us into relapse so often, which is why um, if, if you're trying to stay sober, having um, having good, uh, you know, understanding this is so, so, so important. The emotional part of this so that you can stay sober. Okay. So some takeaways for you from this show, relapse is a normal part of recovery. Certainly I don't want you to relapse, but if you do pick yourself up, keep going. Don't beat yourself up, pick yourself up and uh, call your sponsor or your counselor and start again. And remember that you can do this. Remember one day at a time, work like an ant. <laughs> it takes time. It takes time to get sober. It takes time to build a new life um, away from drugs or alcohol and other addictions. It just doesn't happen overnight. You, you need to give it time, right? Baby steps. Also negative emotions, a huge cause of relapse. So work on strategies for dealing with negative emotions in a healthy way. Check out the episode on emotional sobriety I did, and that'll tell you a little bit more about just what is emotional sobriety and why is that the goal towards, um, towards recovery. And also relapse is a great time to meet with your sponsor or therapist and work on learning about those triggers or cues, whether they're emotional or mental or physical cues, or even like the spiritual cues where you need to pray because you know the enemy's coming in and trying to take you down, recognizing that, and then working on strategies for those times, whether it's prayer, whether it's deep breathing, um, you know, things like that, whether it's, um, you know, for me, I can be very negative. So I, I have to change my thinking patterns a lot and stop and practicing gratitude and gratitude's been huge for me in the sobriety process. There's going to be a lot of things that are going to work well for you. And it's figuring out what those are. And then don't fall into the abstinence violation effect or that black and white thinking where we say, oh, you know, I messed up. So I might as well just go all in. No, you might as well not. <laughs> you might as well just stop and get help and pick up where you left off. I mean, doesn't that make more sense, right? Okay. So friends, thank you so much for being here. And again, please share this channel with anyone that you know, friends or family, acquaintances that you know who struggle with addiction. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the little bell. That way you'll know every time I upload a new video. And thank you so much. And you might be wondering, you know, what are some of those relapse prevention strategies? Well, join me next time. Um, I'm going to do a short series on relapse prevention tips. So don't miss it. And thanks for watching.